Doug Fisher, ed okay. Doug Fisher, editor of Ring TV. Now, big, big rematch. Pacquiao Bradley too. Break it down for me. Well, you know, like Bradley said, this rematch is definitely bigger than the first fight, and um, I think we can agree with that. I was here for the kickoff press conference for the first fight two yeah. years ago, and it was. I'm not going to say it was half as many members of the media here, yeah. but. It was considerably less than we have today. What? And, uh, okay. That's because Bradley's stature has grown in this part. I think 2013 was a really good year for Bradley. Arguably, he was one of the, the fighter of the year candidates. He was right. in the fight of the year against Ruslan Provodnikov. He survived that. He eked out a very close decision. I think he learned a lot about himself. I mean, he, he was always somebody who was in great condition and had uh, an incredibly strong will, but that was the first time he really had to look into his heart and, and guts, really, to pull him through some very um, perilous moments uh, in, in a near disastrous start to that fight and I thought he was brilliant uh, against uh, Juan Manuel Marquez I thought he, he really fought a, a, a the perfect strategy to shut down a, 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 an arguably great fighter yeah. and uh, even though it was a split decision I thought he clearly won that fight eight rounds to four which is saying something because Marquez is still something in this sport um, so I think Bradley has earned this um, consensus number three position in everybody's pound for pound list I'm not like a big pound for pound guy but it's very important to hardcore fans and very important within the sport of boxing and so he's like right behind Floyd Mayweather and um, Andre Ward and I think if he can beat Manny Pacquiao and beat him legitimately in everybody's eyes I think maybe he, he's arguably ahead of Andre Ward because he's a busier guy and he's out there fighting fighters who are either considered elite like Juan Manuel Marquez or used to be considered elite like Manny Pacquiao now on the, on the Pacquiao side he used to be considered like top three pound for pound, no longer. Yeah. Some people have him on the pound for pound list, but it's like eight or nine or whatever, and some people don't. Yeah. So, I mean, I think with his last fight against Brandon Rios, he showed us that he still wants to fight, and he's still a world-class fighter. He shut out Brandon Rios, which, which is saying something. But he didn't look like Manny Pacquiao, not the Pacquiao from 2009 or 2010. He didn't have that elite level athleticism or that, that intensity and drive that really defined Pacquiao more than his boxing ability. It was that fire that he would attack guys with. Yeah. You didn't see that at all against uh, Brandon Wheels. Maybe he didn't need to have it. Um, but if you're like me and you question whether or not Pacquiao is still an elite fighter, this fight will answer that. Because if he can decisively beat Tim Bradley, whether or not he gets it on the judges' scorecards, but if he defi can decisively beat Tim Bradley, to me, that means he's an elite fighter. To me, that means Pacquiao is still pound for pound, a top pound for pound fighter. All right. Now, you mentioned Bradley um, was like three, top three pound for pound. Pacquiao's maybe bottom ten. Are you surprised to see that Pacquiao is like a two to one favorite heading to the rematch? About well, he's got the name still. He's yeah. got the name. And here's the thing. Personally, I favor Tim Bradley to win this rematch. I just think he's the younger, fresher boxer and he's got the career momentum he's got the kind of momentum that gives him confidence he never lacks for confidence he didn't lack confidence going into the first fight but after doing what he did in 2013 I think his confidence has got to be at an all-time high so I really expect to see Tim Bradley not just at his best but at the best that he's ever performed against uh, Pacquiao but there's such a thing as makeup decisions in boxing where if in the first fight there was a poor decision or a, an unpopular decision, and I can't think of a, 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 of a, a decision that was more unpopular than the first Pacquiao-Bradley fight. Sometimes the judges had this pressure on them to make it right. So if there's a, a, a round that's up for grabs, it might go with Manny Pacquiao. And plus, Tim Bradley also, if there's one thing Bradley lacks, it's like one punch knockout power. Yeah. He's not a puncher. He's great on, on every other level as an athlete, as a boxer. But he doesn't get guys out of there. And and that, that I think that bites him in the ass sometimes. And I think sometimes when there's kind of a close round, the judges will go for a guy who's either the aggressor or who's at least throwing the harder punches, like the Marquez fight. That was a split decision. That was, I mean, I thought he out, I'm not, not going to say he outclassed Marquez, but I thought it was clear to me that he, he won the majority of rounds. But then if you look at a lot of media scorecards, a lot of guys had that a draw or just like seven rounds to five for, for, uh, for Bradley. So he kind of has a style that sometimes um, doesn't allow him to win a close round. And if Pacquiao comes in great shape, and if he's just the aggressor, 
if he could steal some rounds in there, okay. you know. So it's I, I can see I can see why the the odds the professional odds makers might you know favor Bradley. I mean I, I remember um, when Evander Holyfield fought uh, Lennox Lewis in '99, and it was a terrible. It was a draw. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it was. Uh, Lewis, everyone thought Lewis. that Lewis won yeah. that fight, right? Going into the rematch, you know, Holyfield did really well. I, if people go to YouTube and watch the, the, the rematch again. The rematch might have legitimately been a draw, legitimately. But at least one judge had it like by a landslide for Lennox Lewis. And it was kind of like they were like, hey, Lewis, you got robbed in that first fight, we're gonna make it right in the second fight. And I don't put it past boxing officials to do that in this fight.